systematic desensitization. It is based on the idea that phobias are learned via classical conditioning. Therefore, as they are learned, so they can also be unlearned. Classical conditioning involves learning to associate something that we initially have no fear of with something that already naturally leads to a fear response. A natural response to an unconditioned stimulus is an unconditioned response. If the unconditioned stimulus is paired with a neutral stimulus, then you learn to react to the neutral stimulus in the same way you react to the unconditioned stimulus. The neutral stimulus then becomes a conditioned stimulus, leading to a conditioned response. For example, when we are seeing a dentist, the nerve being hit is the unconditioned stimulus, which leads to pain. At this point, the drill, which is the neutral stimulus, leads to no response. But during conditioning, the drill associates with the pain after nerve being hit, so it becomes conditioned stimulus, leads to pain, which is the conditioned response now. The process of systematic desensitization is that over a period of time, the conditioned fear response to the conditioned stimulus changes to a learned response of relaxation. This is called counter conditioning, as it is impossible to feel both fear and relaxation at the same time. So the aim is that relaxation prevents the fear. This is called reciprocal inhibition. Systematic desensitization occurs in three stages. The anxiety hierarchy is put together by the patient and the therapist. This is a list of situations related to the phobic stimulus that provoke anxiety arranged in order from least to most frightening. For example, a snake phobic might identify seeing a picture of a small snake as low on their anxiety hierarchy and holding a snake at the top of hierarchy. The second stage is relaxation. The therapist teaches the patient to relax as deeply as possible. This might involve breathing exercise, or alternatively, the patient might learn mental imagery techniques. Patients can be taught to imagine themselves in relaxing situations, or they might learn meditation. Alternatively, relaxation can be achieved using drugs. The third stage is exposure. Finally, the patient is exposed to the phobic stimulus while in a relaxed stage. This takes place across several sessions, starting at the bottom of the anxiety hierarchy. When the patient can stay relaxed in the presence of the lower levels of the phobic stimulus, they move up the hierarchy. Treatment is successful when the patient can stay relaxed in the situations high on the anxiety hierarchy. Exposure can be done in two ways: in vivo. The client is actually exposed to the phobic stimulus, or in vitro, the client imagines exposure to the phobic stimulus. Likewise, flooding as the other treatment of phobias, it is based on similar principles as systematic desensitization, in that it also views phobias as being learned through association, and it is can therefore also be unlearned. Flooding also works on the principle of reciprocal inhibition, that we cannot feel two opposing emotions at the same time. Flooding therefore aims to replace the feelings of fear with feeling of relaxation. However, during flooding, rather than gradually exposing the individual to the fear stimuli, the individual is exposed to it in one long session, and sometimes this is enough to cure a phobia. This session continues until the patient is fully relaxed. For example, a person who is afraid of clowns is placed in a room full of clowns. The therapist encourages the patient to use their relaxation techniques until eventually their anxiety disappears. That's it. Thank you for watching.